Our speaker is Dr. Chi Fun Chan, President and uh, Co CEO of Synopsis Inc. A brief introduction before I welcome him onto the stage. As Synopsis Co CEO, Dr. Chi Fun Chan shares responsibility for crafting vision and strategy, leading the company and ensuring execution excellence in support of uh, their customer success. As the company's president and a COO, a role Dr. Chan held for 14 years prior to his 2012 appointment as president and co-CEO, he guided internal operations and worldwide field organi organizations. Dr. Chan joined Synopsis in uh, 1990 as vice president of applications and services where he, held, uh, where he helped build the technical field organization. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Chi Fun Chan. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, I know I'm the last speaker before lunch and I still see a lot of people here. So either you're very interested in the topic or you're just my friends, or you're just not hungry. <laughs> so I'll try to make sure I'm on time. Um, let's see. Do I press this? It's a beautiful picture, but that's not my presentation. Okay. Uh, oh, they're getting it on. Sorry, I try to be on time. <laughs> I, I can entertain you. If, uh, I, I'll just give the uh, introduction. Actually, this is the last intro talk, and so I'm trying to tell you that AI and automotive is important. But I think you already know that. So I'm trying to go through my forums and try to give you a little bit of perspective of what I think is the industry and also of synopsis. Because the title of this conference is Resurgence. You know, how can, what are the opportunities? So that's what I will concentrate on. And then let, let me see now with, uh, okay. So I titled my talk in terms of has evolution of a trust in a changing ecosystem. So the most, the key word there is actually change, which you all know because in, whenever there's change, there's opportunity. But then I do want to end on, on trust. It might be a strange topic, but then you know, you're hungry. So trust me, we're gonna get to lunch, okay? So first, I don't really need to tell you a lot about India, but I would like to point out why we're so excited about India, okay? First, we are all engineers. So in, Institute of Technology is important, right? And congratulations to IESA, you've been started very, very early. Uh, you can see on the data there, and then you have a lot of very big ecosystem here. And we were happy to see that Synopsis has already participated with our users group, which also has a lot of users in this. And if you look about India again, you know, look at all the company that has been here uh, from, the, from the U.S., representing from the U.S. side and the multinational coming. I, I first came to uh, India in about 1995, to Bangalore, it was a very different place. There was no, uh, traffic was much better, but then the road wasn't much better. So uh, we're very excited to see, and I've been probably here somewhere between 25 times to 30 times. And every year there's a big change. And I think this resurgence of India is a very, very appropriate topic. And I think because of automotive and AI, there's tremendous amount of opportunity. But again, I'm speaking to the group of the experts, so it's clear that why India is so important is because there's just a lot of uh, marketplace and technology and um, people available in this particular place. So <coughs> I'll go to the change. I just want to acknowledge India is very complex. Just before it comes every 20 some time, it's hard to keep up. You know, so we rely on uh, the ecosystem, partners, customer, <coughs> colleagues, to kind of keep educating us what is the thing to do. So here I'd like to share something about change. It is the only constant, as you know. You know, everything is changing. And so <coughs> I'll take my remark into three different areas about changes and what is possible way for us to look at uh, the, the uh, change and how to deal with it. First, I'll talk, talk a little bit about the ecosystem and then I like to talk about the industry, which is the semiconductor industry. And then I talk a little bit about synopsis. A uh, little bit of advertising, but I really want to illustrate how we're trying to change too. 
you know, how we also try to change into a different environment. So I will try to uh, separate those in remark, and then I'll end up with some concluding remarks. On the ecosystem, interestingly, if you look at the entire uh, ecosystem, semiconductor revenue, growth rates been coming down, the revenue been going up, all of us in this field knows, you know, unit, unit is going up uh, a lot, but the growth rate is probably around 4% or so. The growth rate has been coming down because it used to be driven by PC, you know well, it used to be driven by the cloud, and then the last 10 years by mobile. And clearly, you heard all the speakers today, I think there's a lot of agreement. It's on IoT, on automotive, and on AI. And you know, there's a tremendous speaker in front of me that tell why this are so important. I'll just add some perspective uh, to it. On the AI, the marketplace is kind of not known because it depends on whether you count the system, count the traffic, count all of these things. But one thing why it's so interesting to semiconductor professional, like many people in the room, and the electronics uh, system guy above is that, and our speaker from CK just mentioned, it create AI is a lot of big data, right? The math is known a long time ago. What is different, why this research, this big push of AI is because we now have very good computation. We have very good uh, uh, applications and very, very good memory because all these are big data. So that's why also the other speaker also talk about China, right? China has big data because it's big and there's a lot of data. You know, you can get data from a lot of people, you know, and let me not talk about privacy, another issue, but I mean, there is a big data. So that's why whoever has data is important. For us in the semiconductor, means you need to compute and you need to do memory, and then there are new things. So therefore, that's my perspective, why we at Synopsys and our colleague and our customer are so excited about it. The second thing, why is automotive so important? Okay, first, it's very obvious from Synopsys point of view, all of our customers who were in the mobile side are moving to automotive. You heard about Intel, which is a customer, in, right? Clearly in PC, but with mobile eye, you see Qualcomm with NXP. You just, oh, I, I, the examples just go on and on because that's clearly where it is. But the opportunity for us in automotive is not only just that, okay? Clearly, the one of the big opportunity in automotive is the amount of electronics going into the car create a lot more semiconductor and electronics. Therefore, a lot more application and everything. But that's only one of the two major perspectives that we like to share on. The other one is the electrical vehicle has changed. Obviously, you know the electrification, whether it's Tesla or any other named car. What is the main change? Uh, that is there, is the, the change in the supply, supply chain, right? So the OEM used to work with the first tier one supplier, work with the tier two supplier, work with the tier three, and then somewhere there is the ETA vendor supplying it. But now, with the electric vehicle, where the OEMs are no longer just doing transmission and other things, there are multiple other opportunity, right? You see example of Tesla uh, sourcing directly from NVIDIA. So, so every audience in this room, and for India semiconductors, and for India Electronics, I think looking at the supply chain that changes has automotive and AI become the switch from mobile and other area is actually the key. So if I continue, I say that there's one more thing that is important, which is security. Okay, and security comes from two sides. One side is the data protection and privacy and everything else, and among, you can see the amount of tremendous uh, devices that's connected. The other one is coming from a lot more geopolitical area. Every nation state is looking at security, protecting its own supply chain. So you can see one of the things I'm emphasizing, try to give a little uh, a, a perspective is, look at the supply chain and what the change is. And not only are technical people looking at it, commercial looking at it, but nation states are looking at their supply chain for security reasons. So security comes in multiple things. So to me, these three things are driving a lot of changes. And wh wherever position you are have, whether you are ahead, whether you're in a different country that will ahead, 
the game changes everything. Whoever is in second place can be first, whoever in first place can be third. There's a lot of changes going on, and including company like ourselves. We need to be able to survive and thrive, and we need to be able to call it right. So I'll switch to the industry and comment again what I see on the changes side. Okay. Well, it's clear the history of the top semiconductor company are moving. You may not see this, but the first time, I think 2017 come up, Samsung has been uh, just exceeded Intel by very little. They're basically back and forth going up. And clearly, Samsung over time has been growing the chip sales a lot, right, in the systems company. You see this, uh, and, and it's going to be back and forth, I think, on, on this thing. But like to change, you may not be able to see this, sorry, this is the 2017 top uh, fabulous company. And one thing that's really changing in this whole thing is the amount of M&A, right? The amount of M&A in the last 10, 20 years in the uh, semiconductor industry is probably about 20 to $40 billion in market cap. However, in the last three years, you see 100 billion uh, market cap changing hand, 114 billion uh, changing hand. Last year slowed down a little bit, but that's because, one reason is because there was a lot of slowdown in M&A, not because from the purchasing in M&A, it's from the government stopping, right? You look at Qualcomm NXP, you look at Brock, uh, Broadcom, Qualcomm, you look at Lattice being stopped by CVS from uh, US side, you add those up, it's very, very big. So there's another force coming in. So as you look at this M&A has why is there so many M&A? I mean, what is the fundamental reason? Because at the end, when I want to introduce an option, I want to tell you. It's because the market opportunity is there, but the issues that people are looking at is very complex, and therefore you need critical mass to go solve it. Right? When there's large M&A coming in with this change, they also leave a lot of greenfield for many startups to go fill this space. So it's almost like a, a sweeping of a of, a, of multiple consolidation and then green fields are coming out. So another reason why I'm so excited standing in front of you and looking at resurgence of India is that, you know, no matter what position you're in, there are a lot of opportunity because these three find automotive, AI, and um, security is disrupting the entire supply chain. And so you continue to look at this. Um, Technology, now back to a narrow area on semi, I know IESA has a lot of electronic and system area, but the base of it, physics is still a big governor. You heard today from speaker on quantum and everything else, but I'd like to report to you these are synopsis data that track the number of tape out, and you can see we've been tracking it for like 20 some years on the number. It's very healthy in terms of the below um, all the fin fast, whether it's 2016, 14, 10, and now design going on to seven, and now experiments clearly working on five, and research going on to three. You know, the, the, the technology and the physics go on. There is a limit, because as you know, in these, even in automotive and certainly in mobile, power is one of the key things. Low power is one of the key things. And it doesn't take a nuclear scientist to know splitting an atom does not save you any power. You know, at some point, you can't split the atom, right? And at three nanometer, your silicon dioxide is only a few atom thick. So you get, there's, there's, there's some limit to this thing. But in the next few years, this battle is still going on on the entire uh, technology area. So I'll end up the uh, last time before I go talk about the thing about introduce you a little bit of our synopsis, how we look at it. We look, we, today has kind of three pillar of business, the EDA business, the IP business, uh, and we have a third business we'd like to introduce to you, which is a much smaller one, but it actually tells us that in order to keep the other two business, it's important to have the third business to look at the evolution of automotive and AI and everything. Again, I really like this, um, um, uh, this series of what the IESA put out uh, today event because it forced us to think also from synopsis, well, with all these changes, what do we do? I'd like to introduce to one of them is there's also a lot of consolidation. In the 25 years that I've been at synopsis, or 28 years, I stopped counting, um, there, we've done like 80 acquisitions. 
right? There's a lot of consolidation, which actually kind of reflects our customer base, right? Our customer has been consolidating, we've been consolidating a lot. But why do some of them is exactly like what the customer, you want this thing integrated, you want this other piece integrated, you want this analysis integrated. But recently, I just want to show you another integration which is on M&A to acquire into a separate area to try to catch up, or try to catch up to the marketplace, not necessarily a competitor, okay? Before that, I just want to show you, we have a very big uh, uh, spread of people in here. So the reason that we're so interested in technology is Synopsys with about 12,000 uh, employees has about somewhere close to 8,000 to 9,000 engineers with about 1,000 PhDs. So it's like a little university. And the largest location is US with 4,000 some people. And you can, you probably can't read it, but in the, sorry, in the India area, since we started in 1995, we have somewhere over 2,500 people, which represent somewhere of the 30% of the technical forces. And I see that percentage actually increasing. And especially as we, I'd like to introduce you to the third area, uh, not so much on the business, but how we are thinking uh, philosophically on the change. So that third area is the software side. You know, has, people know us as the core EDA and the uh, IP side, and uh, IP is growing quite fast because more designs are going into the IP design side. And the software integrity is really on quality and security. And about three, four years ago, we saw this automotive, AI, and the national, state, and security, and the amount of software coming up. We say, how do we get in? So we basically started to acquire about seven, uh, nine different companies. We started, we acquired a company called Coverity, which is a leader in static code checker. You know, those of you who are design engineers know that 30 years ago, we never used static timing, right? Today, no chips will go out without static timing. The, pro the question is, static code checker are very, important thing, but not every software engineer use it. Why? You know, why? If you have a tool, why won't you use it? And most of the hacking of all these Equifax and all these things that you see are actually just buffer overflow. You know, you, you wrote lousy software, it doesn't, it doesn't do what it does, they take advantage of it. Static code checker gives you buffer overflow easily. It doesn't solve all the problem. It solves the least, it solves a fundamental problem. We just acquired a company called Sigital to do servicing, and we have recently acquired a company called Black Duck. And I'll try to explain why that's so important in automotive. Black Duck uh, fundamentally is the uh, leader in open source software. And if you know three years ago, the chip got hacked in the US, right? You can hack a chip, control it, drive it off the road, all from internet. And I would say five years ago, if you ask a, um, if you ask the software uh, people where, where really is the, where really is the um, a security issue? Is it in the hardware or the software? You know, the aerospace and the uh, automotive industry understand the supply chain of all the mechanical part really well. If you're on a, if you're on a flight, every screw, whoever touches it, they know. But five years ago, four years ago, if you ask how many lines of code do you have in your automotive, many companies don't know. You know, is it one million, is it 10 million? Uh, well, it ranges from 10 to 100 million. And then if you ask a secondary question, how many of lines of your code in your automobile is open source? You draw a lot of blanks there. No, it's a major security issue, right? In terms of if you don't know where your supply chain is. is. And so, um, if you look at where we are recently in about 2014, I mean, three, four years ago, we know we're on the uh, chart in uh, Gartner in the software, for those of you who might be interested, on the um, horizontal axis is how your vision is, you know, whether it's low or high, on your upper axis, whether your product is low or high. So if you are very high, if you're on the lower right-hand corner, you have very high vision, but you don't have product, so you call it visionary, right? So if you're on the very high uh, left-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, you don't have a lot of vision, but you have a lot of good product. So you're called a challenger, right? So on that journey, we started as a visionary, okay? And we'll take it, and recently, they start to qualify us as a leader, and we are now competing into that space of application security. Okay, so I use this as an example to show 
just like all of us, just like the resurgence in India, when we look at the automotive and the uh, AI being important and security, you buy into it, how do you get into it? We also have to reinvent ourselves because the security is important in us and automotive, but not just on the software side because it helps our EDA tools to be stronger in the automotive on verification and, if, and uh, implementation and helps our IP because you need to be 26262 safety uh, certified. You need to have ASOB, ASOD. So the whole thing has to fit because when you look at those things, you need to uh, discuss how it goes. And then you start to ask the question, how does the designing an automotive IC differ than my team who's designing mobile IC? What is the fundamental difference? So two things come out. One is documentation and verification become very critical. The other one is failure in time, failure analysis. For example, you heard about a lot about reliability. Because most of us do not carry a cell phone that's 15 year old, but you will be driving a car that will, the car that will be 10, 15 year old. So these kinds of things are what causes us to look at you know, the software side and all these sides. So, a lot of global firms will continue to invest in India. I think I like the uh, section because I see India, the restraint is gonna come from a lot of global firms and a lot from the local firms because basically there is industry uh, ecosystem. There is also fundamental, the most fundamental is very strong university graduate. A graduate number two in terms of the um, engineering team in the world, China is number one. US is now far behind, unfortunately you know, in terms of the expression, the basic science and everything else, and you have a market. That is one of the key ingredients to uh, success. You, in my mind, industry, um, the university, today we heard from the government, and a control of the marketplace. So, I would say trust and change are the only constant. Because I thought about what to tell you about how I think about this, and I can illustrate a lot of change, but I, I want to talk about a little bit of trust. But before that, I want to give you like, probably like two examples, uh, two, three examples that is kind of very well known, but maybe think of it as different. Well, you know, in China right now, you can see uh, rental bikes everywhere that are off there. It's called OFO, OFO. And of course, India also have its version, rent, rent on go, right? So let me just tell you the three examples which you all know, and then try to comment why it, it Trace my mind. Uber, ride sharing, and of course, India have Ola, right? And then um, AR and B, all the hotel, and India have Oyo. I, I'm not sure why India company all have O on two sides, but there must be something uh, cultural I still need to understand. But the reason when I look at this, I say these are also changes, right? If you look at the bike, you know, five years, 10 years ago, you would lock your bike. You wouldn't just borrow a bike and just put it there. Why would you trust the system? You know, look at Uber. Five years ago, you wouldn't let stranger get into your car, you know, or jump into a stranger's car without some label. But you are starting to do that. A, R, and B, you're inviting strangers to come to your house, right? So the trust factor is actually changing. It's the, the reason that I say this, where has there is change? There are two things to really remember. When the AI and automotive things are changing and together with security, one thing that's changed is the ecosystem and the supply chain is changing. So there are opportunity. People who can read it correctly will find either through consolidation or through startup and opportunity. The other one is the trust. The form of trust is changing. Trust doesn't change. Trust is one of these things just like change. It's the only constant, you know, and, but it's, if the ecosystem and supply chain change, the form changes, just like Uber, just like a um, the Airbnb, so it changes, but you have to reestablish those things in the form that suits the application. And so one of the reasons I set this topic up for is that, you know, I'm very eager to continue the resurgence of India to continue to establish trust with the ecosystem, with our customer, with the university, because the form changed, but the fundamental thing, just like families and friends who are waiting for me to eat, trust doesn't change, and I would like to continue to be a trusted partner. Thank you. I'd like to request uh, Mr. Rajiv uh, Kushu from uh, Texas Instruments to please come 
onto the stage and present Dr. Chi Fun Chan with a small token of our appreciation. <laughs>